We are back with this Mercedes C280 and today we are getting front left and right brake hoses. There is not a problem right now with these but you can see the cracking and the brake hose and it's like that on the right side as well. So we're going to take care of this before it actually turns into a problem. Alright, so the new hose is in place. It went super easy. Here's a closer look at the old one that came off. Should get that to focus. Probably not. Alright. Um, now, I don't know if that's just normal wear and tear. Or if it was because it was rubbing. The first time I worked on this car, I noticed that... Uh, this little rubber grommet was not in place so the rubber hose was able to pretty much bounce around back and forth inside of this bracket. I don't know if that had anything to do with it. It doesn't really matter. They're both getting replaced at this point. Uh, yeah, like I said, pretty easy stuff going on here. And all I'm going to do here is open up the bleeder and uh, let it, what they call gravity feed, gravity bleed. <laughs> uh, just open it up and you can see the brake foot starts to come out slowly. See a little bit of air coming out. <laughs> have a Nissan Sentra. What year is this? 2008. We got an 08 Sentra and it is getting front lower ball joints. And the struts are completely blown out. So we are replacing the struts here. Bunch of crap, crap Nissan. <laughs> I'm talking crap, uh, but yeah, it's going pretty smooth. And go ahead, we got the new ball joint in already. We're gonna get the strut done, and we can move on to the right side. I'm back with this Mercedes ML 350, and today we're just getting outer tie rods. I don't know if you could see this, but probably not moving the camera too much. But the outer tie rod is loose, and same thing for the one on the right side. So it's gonna get both tie rods. We have a 1998 Chevy Tahoe. Uh, the brake pedal pretty much goes all the way to the floor. It does stop, but the brake pedal goes all the way down. We got misfires. I don't know if you could hear how it's idling. And uh, I noticed if you're driving straight, it moves okay, but as soon as you turn the wheel left or right, it's like you put your foot on the brake. Almost like uh, when a brake line is twisted or routed the wrong, the wrong way. So when you turn the steering wheel, it's kind of binding the, the brake hose. And it just feels like the brake pedal is being pushed while whatever you're trying to drive. It looks like somebody's uh, been meddling around in here to say the least. And here's the only code we have. Alright, so sorry for the noise. I disabled the fuel pump. Let's see if uh, get to work. And I don't hear a compression problem. Sounds okay to me. It's hard to see, but it looks like we have new plugs and wires. I see a lot better on this side. See, we have some on cylinder one, five, and seven. All right, so misfires one, five, and seven. Those are all on the same bank, okay, on the driver's side. So the first thing I wanted to look at was the O2 sensor, you know, because if you have a bad sensor, it's gonna affect pretty much the entire bank, right? But no, I checked it and it's working fine. It responds to a lean and a rich condition. So I'm just gonna put that aside for now. I started to look at the thing that someone previously touched, right? The thing they were in here doing. So new plugs and wires. So I'm gonna pull the spark plug. So I decided to take out cylinder number five's spark plug. And by the way, it wasn't tight at all. It's very loose. What do we see? Pretty much no gap. Why do I keep running into this problem? <laughs> it's so stupid. Uh, but yeah, specification is about 60 thou. This tool starts at 20, and I can't even get the 20 in. So cylinder number one, and this one actually was tight. Uh, the gap is a little bit better, but not 
quite where it's supposed to be. This one is at about 35 if I remember correctly. So it's, like I said, it needs to be at 60. So we're going to go ahead, gap this one, and then pull out the one in cylinder number 7. That'll be the last one to check. And here goes number 7. Almost, uh, just about no gap either. It's crazy. <sighs> Almost makes me want to check all the other ones. But uh, let's fix these gaps and see if it takes care of our misfires for now. And uh, if it did, probably go ahead and check all the other spark plugs. So I got the misfires pulled up once again and let's focus on cylinders 1, 5 and 7 since those are the ones that pulled the spark plugs out of. And you can see absolutely no misfires. 1, 5 and 7 running perfectly. And now we do have very minor misfires on cylinders 2 and 3. And like I said I just have to pull out the other spark plugs and I'm pretty sure we're going to find the same problem on them. It's most likely not as severe as the ones that were on bank 1. But I'm just going to assume we're going to have a spark plug gap issue on the other ones as well. But that's a fix. Here we have a Chevy Trailblazer. Came in on the hook the other day. Overheating. Customer said need the radiator and there is no doubt about that. Look at this. Look at that crack, it's crazy. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. Time to get this radiator out of this trailblazer. I got a little helper with me. Hey, say hi. <laughs> All right, so the radiator is out. I think it's uh, way past two. Hey, what are you doing? Hey. What is that? Leave the ants alone. <laughs> All right, so we are ready to put the new radiator in. Uh oh, that oil filter looks like it's leaking like crazy. Well, it's a good thing I'm doing oil change today on it. Make sure we take care of that. Can you tell I'm not having a good day? Mm-hmm. Alright, so this is attempt number two. We have a new radiator. Uh, the kind people of AutoZone were nice enough to uh, exchange the radiator for me. Uh, so everything went in smoothly this time. I was extra careful. And uh, this one will be all set. I still have to do the oil change on it and look at some other stuff. So I am underneath this uh, trailblazer. Just finished draining all the oil out of it. You can see right there. Now, this thing. It's dripping oil like crazy, like really fast. Look at that. That's from it just sitting here for a few minutes. And earlier, I saw it dripping right off of that filter. Place your bets now. I bet you that thing is not loose. I mean, <laughs> I bet you it's not tight. Oh my god, look at this. Look at that. <laughs> and I'm not even joking. This is the first time I touch it. It's crazy. I'm back with that trailblazer. It's almost never ending. <laughs> it's got a few other issues going on with it. Uh, one of them is the P0014. Okay. So the first thing I wanted to check is this uh, solenoid right here. Uh, I expected to see it clogged because uh, the oil in this engine doesn't get changed very often. And the oil that came out was pretty like thick and sludgy. Alright, so look at the top port and the lower one they look pretty clean but look at the center see how that filter looks like it's clogged all the way around and that can cause problems so at this point I don't think I could take off this little filter or strain or whatever it is without damaging something so I'm gonna try to clean it out with brake parts cleaner and see if we could clean up this filter clean out that filter on the solenoid and put it back in it didn't really make much of a difference but it's just little things like that so at least we know that's fine for now since we cleaned it out now uh, let's look at misfires because another issue we are having here if this would focus is uh, during idle 
it idles perfectly smooth but as soon as you hit the accelerator pedal it just like falls on its face you can even see a misfire just happen right there again cylinder 5 has the most okay so now let's go into history you can see 1 and 2 in history have some misfires but look at number 5 in history crazy amount of misfires So could this be an issue with spark plug gap that at idle, it's fine, but once you get on it, it starts misfiring like crazy. So I got the coil and plug out of cylinder number five. Um, last time I was in here was months ago, maybe even a year ago. I placed one ignition coil. You can see how that one looks new compared to the others. And it also got a new throttle body, all right? And at that point, I still hadn't replaced the plugs. So I talked to the owner right now, and he said he can't remember the last time the plugs were changed. All right, so here's cylinder number five. And obviously, these plugs have been in here for a long time. Sure, we have some oil inside of here. It's not severe, but the valve cover gasket is leaking a little bit on as far as this cylinder goes. But it wasn't like puddled up inside of there, so it's not severe at this point. One thing I noticed when I took the coil off is you could see that tracking right there. So the spark is uh, jumping right out of here before it even makes it to the tip of the spark plug. Okay, so with a quick Google search, these plugs are supposed to have a gap of 0 0.043. And right here, closest one I have is 0 0.044, which is this one in the corner. like a hot dog down the hallway all right I'm not even gonna bother looking at the other spark plugs uh, this thing is getting a set of new spark plugs and that's it all right just to uh, not leave you guys hanging so here's a new plug and uh, we got all AC Delco parts now the new plug I noticed the point zero four barely fits like it's tight I don't want to force it in, but that really fits. The point zero four on the old plugs, yeah, good luck with that. I think all the gaps are huge compared to uh, how the new one fits the point zero four. And this vehicle is going to need a valve cover gasket. We're not going to do it today, but it does need one. So, new spark plugs are in the Trailblazer, taking it out for a test drive, and it is like a completely different vehicle. From a dead stop, you hit the pedal, and it just goes. There's no hesitation, there's no engine buckling or anything like that. Nice and smooth. Now, I've known the owner of this car for some time. And as long as he's had this trailblazer, it's always driven like that. So it's uh, it's nice to uh, finally get it fixed and have it driving nice and smooth. All right, so the owner of that trailblazer I've been working on just dropped off his Jeep. It seems like he just switches them out. Whenever he drops one off, he picks the other one up. Um, and the problem he's having with this Jeep right now is he said it was dumping power steering fluid out like crazy. So first thing I noticed is these two lines are rubbing against each other. I turn the car on to see where it's leaking from, but there isn't any power steering fluid left to see it pouring out. But I did see something start to develop right where these two are touching. So uh, I'm going to try to bend this line. It looks like it's going to need a new line. But I'm going to try to bend it and uh, just confirm if I can see like a small pinhole right here. Alright, so apparently I was wrong. Right out of the gearbox. Here working on this Jeep. I just got the gear out and I decided to take the arm off of it. 
I already cleaned it up with the wire brush and some uh, brake parts cleaner. And I think I'm gonna call it quits for now. Sounds like the baby just woke up, so I have to go in the house. I will be back in a second. I am all done with the gearbox. No more leaks. And uh, I even cleaned some of this stuff up. Uh, you know, just to. It, it was really messy. So, some brake parts cleaner, a little bit of a. Uh, elbow grease got it looking halfway decent the gear works tested it everything's moving fine again like I said no more leaks customer now wants me to do a tune-up because it's running rough I could hear a few misfires so I pulled out one of the plugs and uh, that's the plug in one of them Man, but this thing came out rough. I mean, it's like one of those things where it just doesn't feel right. It's actually kind of scary to even want to go forward and try to pull these plugs out. I don't know. I don't, I don't got a good feeling about this when they when they fight you to come out. So, all right. So the other three on that bank over there came out pretty easy. Now, on this side, the first uh, cylinder is fighting me once again. I guess the trick here is uh, penetrating oil. And uh, just work the spark plug back and forth. You know, don't give it the full beans because it's not going to be a good day if you break a spark plug. Okay, so I got all of the plugs out, and uh, hmm, I wonder why it has misfires. Somebody's listening to Cisco over there. What's that thong song? Baby, that thong, 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 thong. <laughs> And uh, here goes a new one, just for reference. Alright, so I'm done with the tune-up. Truck runs better. Power steering now works. No leaks. There's one last thing that I told the owner I would take care of. And it's this. He has this annoying noise down here while he's driving. And you can imagine how annoying that gets while you're driving. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it off for him. <laughs> it's really not doing anything here. So might as well just take it off. Can you tell that it put up a fight? Oh my god, what a nightmare to get this thing off. There's some heavy duty steel right here. Use all of this to get it off. And the worst thing ever is when you start doing a job that once you destroy it, it has to come off and the customer is like, I'm going to be there in 20 minutes to pick it up. Like, oh crap, crunch time, right? You got to try to get it done. Here we have a 2011 Hyundai Elantra. It's here for front and rear brakes. Here's the situation back here. So because of this, uh, owner decided to just do the brakes all the way around. I think it had... Uh, original rotors and maybe changed pads once I don't really know but as you can see I started on the front and uh, yeah it's it's getting late but I told him I'd have it done by I don't know 11 p.m. and uh, he'll have his car ready for uh, work tomorrow morning Here's that uh, 08 Cadillac CTS and it's here for a wheel bearing. Now this thing is being a major pain in the butt to get out. I had to resort to uh, putting this on one of the bolts coming out the back of the wheel bearing and then wedge it right there on the subframe and use the rack and pinion to kind of you know, help force out the wheel bearing. And it's working, making progress. I'm done doing that. Now it's just uh, all air hammer work. So that's a good sign right there. Here we have a 1997 Toyota Camry. Uh, it came in because it has no brakes. One of the brake lines is busted due to rust. 
so I'm just here to look at it and see if it's something I'm going to do or not this morning I unlock the driver door get in it and it's a no crank so I had to push the car into the driveway then I talked to the owner and he says oh yeah I forgot to tell you about that you have to get in the car from the passenger door and then start the car it's the only way it's gonna start so I go on that side I unlock it from the passenger door and what do you know the car starts that's crazy open up the hood and the first thing I notice is this thing is just sitting here okay it's not even tied down to anything but you could see how it's been shorting out to the positive terminal right there that is crazy well, I guess you can say this escalated quickly It's going to need the lines going to both of the rear wheels pretty much done here on the left side as you can see I tried to follow the original design how it just bends around it loops it goes in there and you can see it goes into its uh, mounting location it's not touching anything right here and then we go underneath here now I tried to like I said try to make the line go where it originally came from so it comes from behind the gas tank so you can see it right there, comes around, goes behind the gas tank, comes out right here, bends around, bends, 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 goes into all of its locations, and you can see my splice right there. Now I still have some, uh, some tweaking to do, you know, to make it look a little bit nicer, and once I bolt everything up, it should fit nicely. As you can see, I'm pretty much done here on the right side. Now, I'm trying to bleed the brakes here, okay, but the thing is, I'm not really getting any brake fluid coming out of this caliper. And then I noticed something. Look at that brake hose. Completely stretched out. And it is hard like a rock. Barely even move it. I think the hose is being pinched right here because it's supposed to go over the knuckle, not in front of it. So I'm going to see if I could get this fixed. Really, it should get a new brake hose. Okay, so uh, for some reason this back... Uh, for some reason this bracket was bent. It was, uh, you know, like facing over here. And that was causing extra stress right here. Uh, but yeah, the hose is uh, torn. I could feel it from the back side. It's, uh, it's not at the point where it's causing a leak. But that hose needs to get replaced. And after doing that, sure enough, I was able to uh, get brake fluid to come out the caliper so that just tells me that this thing was pinched right here and I'm sure these brakes weren't really doing anything to stop the car here we have a Oldsmobile Alero obviously front brakes here's the situation so just uh, knocking this out and uh, when I pulled it in the engine didn't sound too good so I'm gonna check the oil before I give it back to the owner. All right, so I just finished doing the brakes on that Alero. It's all set. Now we have a Ford Edge. There's the next car that was waiting in line. And we're doing the rear brakes on this one. See? So you can see, same crap going on here. These rotors were uh, way past due. All right, so no surprise that uh. AutoZone gave us the incorrect parts, so the owner had to go back to AutoZone to exchange the rotors that they gave her. Meanwhile, I decided I'll get a jump start on the right side here, right? Might as well, not waste time. As soon as I pulled the rotor off, I noticed that someone did a stage one weight reduction on this vehicle. You could see that the parking shoes had been removed. Also, don't you just love when you have to use the air hammer to remove brake pads? Okay, so here's where I'm at. Everything is taken apart on both sides and pretty much just waiting on the owner to bring me the new rotors, right? So I get a call from the owner. Guess what? She cannot exchange or return the rotors. Why? Because the AutoZone that she went to by her house is like maybe like 50 minutes away from here, okay? The woman at the register rung her up for the correct parts but physically gave her the wrong parts 
So she went to the AutoZone by my house, which is like five minutes away. And she's trying to exchange them or return them, and they will not let her. Why? Because she's trying to return parts that have one part number, but her receipt has a completely different part number. So as far as they're concerned, you could have bought these and you're trying to return a different set of rotors and they physically would not, they would not allow her to do this and the owner just doesn't have $150 right now to dish out for another set of rotors so she calls me and asks me if I could just put the old brakes back on the car I'm like what are you kidding me after all this work no so I told her you know what I'll wait just drive out to the AutoZone by your house where you got this and hopefully they can resolve it so now I'm stuck a easy job you know it's costing me hours get in the zone auto zone here I have a Chrysler 300 we're doing both of the front lower ball joints looks like somebody's been in here it's got a new upper control arm new strut assembly new stabilizer links but what's weird is they didn't change the most common part to go bad on this thing the stabilizer bar bushings so they are worn out pretty good they changed the links but not the bushings in order to remove the ball joint you have to remove this arm right here because you're not going to be able to get like your receiving cup on the actual ball joint because this arm is in the way so that arm does not want to separate from the knuckle. It is completely seized in there. And this is what happened last night. I had so much pressure being applied with this. And then, you know, using a torch, using the air hammer, that thing would not budge. So I was like, screw it, I'm just going to apply more pressure. And boom, it snapped. I felt the wind of this part fly past my face, hit the wall. It sounded like someone grabbed the rock and threw it at the wall as hard as they can. At that point, I just threw in the towel like, I'm, I'm done here. I'm going to end up getting hurt on this job. <laughs> mm.